what is African Liberation Day? African Liberation Day is an international day of solidarity among African people everywhere. And when I say everywhere, meaning that whether we're in uh, North, Central, South America, the Caribbean, Europe, and in Africa, um, African people uh, organi an organization come together to observe that day. It was in 1958 on April 15, the first conference of independent African state, which was attended by eight African head of state, declared the April of 15 African Freedom Day around that time. Um, but in 1963 and the 25th of May, it was on the founding of the Organization of African Unity. Um, 32 head of state, the, uh, we name African Freedom Day, African Liberation Day. African Liberation Day is a holiday celebrated on May 25th among many Pan-Africans and people globally of the diaspora. The date aligns with the formation of the Organization of African Unity in Ethiopia in 1963. There is acknowledgement of work to be done through political education and organization reflective of the fact that we have not yet obtained our freedom. And there's some purpose of why we organize African Liberation Day. One, to raise our people consciousness about their history, their culture, um, the struggle for liberation, and uh, ultimately Pan-Africanism. And what we mean by Pan-Africanism is that is a goal of the liberation movement, whereby we want to liberate, unify, and develop Africa as a world power. So that's the goal, that's the goal. So we want to raise our people consciousness about that, the history, culture, and the struggle for liberation and Pan-Africanism. Now, people may think we're just talking about Africa, but we're talking about liberation of African people wherever they live, wherever they're struggling, in the Virgin Islands, in the Caribbean, in Europe, Wherever our people is, we, we, that's what Af African Liberation Day is about. Uh, we come together and share our experience uh, throughout the world and what strategy are we doing to achieve that objective. Another purpose of African Liberation Day is to encourage one and all to join an organization or organization uh, working for people in, in terms of liberation, self-determination. Uh, economic or, or social justice, equal right and justice, those type of things, we encourage one and all to join an organization. So, you know, African Liberation Day is not just a celebration, but it's an uh, activity, a day whereby we raise our consciousness and be committed to um, join some organization so we could achieve the objective that what we want, you see. So, uh, that's in a nutshell in terms of African Liberation Day. I, I talk about the origin in Africa, but in here in the Caribbean, it was started first in um, it was started first in 1971 in Guyana. They were the first, you could say, South is a South American, more Caribbean country that observed African Liberation Day in 1971. And then in 1971 too, you had the African Liberation Day Committee committee in the United States. That is a committee of group of uh, African conscious uh, organization that organized the first African Liberation Day in the United States. Here in the Virgin Island, you had a group of the student progressive organization that went to Antigua. They were invited to go to Antigua to observe an African Liberation Day over there. And that's in 1971. And then in 1981, you had the Student Coalition for Better Government, which it was headed by a former senator, O.C. Richard, and others. Uh, who, are, who hail uh, African Liberation Day in St. Croix, in St. Croix. Then it was 1983, the All-African People Revolutionary Party and the African Appraisal Workshop organized the first uh, annual public uh, African Liberation Day here in St. Thomas. And from then, from then it spread to St. Croix and St. John. They're supposed to develop the appropriate plans, programs, and ceremonies for the celebration of African Heritage Week in the Virgin Islands. And the 
on the day, which sometimes the day falls on a weekend, but if the day falls during the week, it, it's usually a commemoration that's held in the chamber, in the legislative hall. Um, and that has been happening for a number of years. And then the different organizations, individuals, culture bearers, uh, sometimes youth groups and different things will attend that and commemorate through song, through dance, through poetry, through spoken information, uh, conch shell blowing and all sorts of different things. What I've found through research and also from certain experiences here is that other places in the world, they bring in speakers to speak about the topics of African liberation and different things going on in other places in the world. Now, um, to speed it up to what's going on, um, the, the African Union, which replaced the organization of African Unity, right? They um, did an observe we call Africa Month. And mostly it's a, it's a celebration among uh, this country where they celebrate the African cultural heritage, okay? But uh, those of us who are still under some form of colonialism and neocolonialism, African Liberation Day still have its um, intention of organizing and encouraging our people to join some group to be about really achieving liberation and self-determination. And so it applies here for us in the Virgin Island. So we're just letting people know, yes, we celebrate our cultural heritage, but also there's an ongoing struggle until we see Africa is standing on its own two feet, right? As a world power, just like the United States is a world power, Russia is a world power, China is a world power. Our vision, which has been articulated by Dr. Edward Wilmer Blyden and, and Hubert H. Harrison, it, uh, Dr. Wil Wilma Blyden is from St. Thomas and Hubert H. Harrison from St. Croix. And they may articulate in this vision from way back then, you know, from the, from the 19th century, late 19th century, that we want to see Africa uh, as a world power, you know? So that vision has not been achieved. So uh, we, African Liberation Day will continue until we achieve that vision. And that's our mission of all um, black people, some people refer to say black people, we say with African people throughout the world. That's a, that's a, a objective. All people of African descent, and we're talking about whether they live in North or South America, in the Caribbean, and or in any part of the world, are Africans and belong to the African nation. And so uh, we look, we looking for total liberation and unification of African under an all African socialist government must be primarily objective, must, must be our primary objective. And so we are looking for all black people throughout the world. It is it's subject to that. And every year when it comes up to African liberation because the struggle continues. And so you're looking for us to, for the fulfillment and aspirations of our African people and the descendants and the descendants and the descendants until we have caused ourselves to be able to have that educational solidarity, support Africa, support Africans throughout the diaspora and to support uh, our struggle and make sure that we have an economic force because we keep going through all the different things. And so it includes just not Africa, but it is putting Africa first, but it's not putting Africa first, it's putting African people first. We are all Africans and we have all descended from this and from our people. So that's what we're looking for, for us to be able to create one African nation. And Sister Anna uh, can tell you some of the things we've been doing um, before this was enacted, you know? Um, as a community group, she can yes. let us let the uh, audience know what we've been doing, what our program looks like. Well, our mission has been educational, primary educational, because if we don't know our history, we can't determine our future. All right. So, as he was saying, grassroots people have historically, as they learn, they've begun to have programs to teach 
So we had the African Appraisal Workshop. Although it is no longer in existence, it was a seed and it spawned and educated people who have gone on after them. So that was a community organization that taught the cultural and historical aspects of Africa and the spread of the diaspora and so forth. They had programs that were beneficial to the struggle of African people in the Virgin Islands society and elsewhere. Through knowledge, by gaining that knowledge, people were able to see how the struggle continues. We also have the Pan-African Support Group, which is still currently existing and working. Yearly, they have community forums, radio programs, meetings, celebrations. Throughout the years, the activities are varied. We have to say that in the past, we have had so many activities and so many pamphlets. You also have the All African People's Revolutionary Party. It's an independent Pan-African party that is educating, organizing, and mobilizing African peoples in the United States, the Caribbean, Europe, Africa, wherever the diaspora is, and even where they aren't. To, the, to learn about the struggles of Pan-Africanism. All right, then you had the Imboko Society of Africa, which is a cultural organization that promotes the African heritage and has programs in Africa and around, spreading out to the rest of the world to support the struggle for liber liberation and self-determination in Southern Africa and the Virgin Islands. And I learned that the word means rock. So just like a rock here, rock city, we have to know that foundation, that strong foundation. We have the Student Coalition for Better Government um, was a group in St. Croix, and they would have an annual program. Again, focuses on education and not letting the community forget. The Rastafarian movement, they have always supported African liberation and the movement has held ALD observations in St. Croix and St. Thomas. And not only do they hold their own activities, rallies, meetings, they have also supported other Pan-African support group activities or ALD activities regardless of who produces them. Now, that's just a few of the organizations that have con you know, constantly had these activities. We have some smaller ones also, different sorority groups and whatnot also are having these activities. For with knowledge is power, right? And just to quote Malcolm X, a strong Africa will produce a respected black man anywhere that black men go on this earth. So it's only with a strong Africa, an independent Africa, and a respected Africa that wherever those of African origin or African heritage or African likeness go, they will be respected. But we like to say this to anyone listening that they need to include African studies, Caribbean, and Virgin history in the school. How can we ask our school or community to celebrate or have activity related to African heritage if they don't have the information or the knowledge? So it's very important uh, to those who are hearing that we have to put the, the African study in the school uh, so that our children, young people, and adults can be able to express themselves culturally. You know, even here uh, in our program, the community group, which I'm not going to share with you, I got to show in a little bit. In our community group, when we organize the African Liberation Day activity, uh, we have we have a, 
uh, in, we call an international forum, which include liberation organization. We focus more on organization that, than individual. We invite organization to come and express what they're doing, what they experience um, to achieve liberation. So we have what we call an um, in, international forum. We invite group from whether the Caribbean, um, United States, uh, we invite a group from Brazil, you know, South America, um, Africa, definitely during the height of the, um, the South African struggle, invite different liberation movement. Um, so um, we have an international forum also. We have we need to have what we call a march, a march, we need to have a march, and then we have a rally, a cultural, mostly a cultural rally where we express our cultural heritage, you know, song, dance. Um, music, poet, uh, reciting poetry. Um, we have um, libation, definitely, uh, which Felicia would um, explain more than me. Uh, we have libation, paying tribute to our ancestors. Uh, we have drumming. And we make sure we involve the young stars, young people in the group to, to, to express themselves, the, the African culture heritage. That's what we do in the community. March pulling the community together, um, have, a, have a forum, and then have a cultural rally where we can express our African culture heritage. And basically, any community group um, doing that, you can use your creativity, your creative imagination, but those, those are the fundamental activity that you do for African Liberation Day. And so, so highlight on that in the past, since the 1980s, the University of the Virgin Islands has helped us in putting, um, we have put certain, we have brought in very many speakers. We have had people like John Henry Clark, Kwame Nkuma. Tori. Tori. Kwame, Kwame Tori, sorry. Um, Kwame Tori. We have had Muku Baruka. That's mm. cultural. You, we've brought in different artists, like we've brought in different speakers from Brazil, different speakers from South America, different speakers from the Caribbean and throughout from Ghana. Um, they have come over and they have did lectures and they have educated not just us, but they have spoken in the University of the Virgin Islands and they have given us an insight to that. So we always are looking to educate the community. And so uh, African Liberation Day with the solidarity, we are looking for you and we're looking to be able to make sure. And the one call that uh, Liva keeps saying is we want you to organize. You don't have to join the Pan-African Support Group. You just need to come as a community, organize, get educated, be able to understand that we, as an African people, we need to be able to come together as a community and take our community further. And the legislature has observed the African Liberation Day, they have raised the flag and the, to show our solidarity with our people, our African people, because we are all Africans, period. In 1990, it was also an honor to have the Honorable Governor mm -hmm. Alexander Farrelly speak in the program, bring in the youth, bring in the groups, we always had a master of ceremony. Um, and in 1990, we had the Honorable Jean Emanuel, all right? Blessing these headquarters. You know, we, had, we have an introduction, you have an invocation. Always the Virgin Islands March. And when you think of the greatness of Milo and the Kings and how historic they are, and important to this community they are given their talents that showed everybody here how important it was to celebrate our oneness okay to, to, you to, had, to add to what you Roland, to add to what you're saying in terms of anthem right yes you, uh, you can have any of the three anthem what is the virgin march the black national anthem and in cozy Sikalili, africa Mm -hmm. It definitely encodes Lily Africa, which is a Pan-African um, anthem, which has been adapted by South Africa as their national anthem. But encodes Lily Africa, which means God bless Africa, 
should be sung or played definitely at all um, African Liberation Day activity, whether it's the legislature, whether in the community, that anthem is the Pan-African anthem for our people throughout the world. In the Virgin Islands, a lot of times for cultural events, you'll hear clear the road because of the significance of the fire burn on St. Croix. And so that's that's why you might hear that song a lot, because it, it brings remembrance of uh, resistance movements and so on that took place locally. You'll also hear Funga Alafia and the callback, the, the response to that would be Ashe Ashe. Funga Alafia actually um, is a welcome song. So in many traditions, that song will be played first, again, welcoming everyone, including the ancestors, to whatever the activity is, similar to a musical libation, if you want to look at it like that. And then Ashe Ashe, so it's like, welcome. Yes, yeah, so be it. Let's go ahead. Let's move forward. Um, so it is. When you open your program, and the program is called to order by a Blowing. 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 Mm -hmm. And that is has been a communication of Africans to call people to the point. And so it is, Kongshel Blowing is really three blows because that's kind of a spiritual thing. And it's three blows and that's telling our people to come, we're ready to begin the program and come to order and we're all here. And it has always, the conch shell blowing has been used in several different things. It has its negative contributions to, in, in, in terms of our enslavement and its negative contribution was the slave master used to use a conch shell blowing to call us to the plantation to begin picking and mm. begin to get us there and get us to start working. But also we have, uh, but we use it as a form of communication. Uh, we use it as a way of even a, at the fish market, they used to blow the conch shell and say the fishermen are in, the fish is ready to get sold. And so it, 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 that's how you begin the program and you go on. A lot of uh, events, activities, uh, rebellions, um, ad advocacy groups, diff different things. They start out with the blowing of the conch shell as if to say, all right, it's time. It's, it's communicating, not just to those who are there, but to those who are away, who can hear, something is about to go on. Something is about to happen. Okay, and that something can be many different things. Uh, it's, it's again also in some cultures used for like a spiritual connection to the ancestors. Uh, again, a calling of like, okay, it's, it's similar to the libation in, in how it's thought of by some people. And in blowing, it does a lot to connect lots of things without saying any words. The drumming has been always a way of our communicating between each other and so whenever we have done anything uh our african people and this is not just in the virgin islands but throughout you 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 do the drumming and the drumming is communicating through the hills and it's communicating back and forth it's a, we're, we're ready to start is what even if, when we're ready to start the revolution so you have to be able to uh communicate to your people that other people don't necessarily know what you're saying and then the next thing is like all other programs we begin yes. it with a libation and libation is a prayer a lot of people don't really realize it they it's like it's when you say invocation the libation is the invocation and it is uh it, it can be done and it's just heartfelt it has different themes or different things it can be done through yoruba akan or any kind of other traditional African, it can also be just spiritually speak from your heart. And so you are pouring, I do libations and I usually do uh, a Yoruba libation, uh, but you can do it any other way. And you pour the water to the ground because you're taking your strength and you're asking their strength to be your strength. Uh, so you are asking the community, uh, it's just an opening prayer. And so, but it's not just an opening prayer. It's a spiritual prayer. And it's going back to your traditions. 
And it says, and the reason why sometimes you ask, why do we say, can the eldest in the community uh, ask their permission? Because the eldest community, as elders are the people that's gonna educate us and keep us going forward. And you ask for the youngest because you want them to be present because they want to be, we want them to be educated and they are our future. And the people that are still ongoing, they are our future. So we need to make sure that they're educated. So that's where a libation comes for. And so we, um, libations, people do libations all the time, but they don't realize they do libations all the time. Because if you look at any funeral and if you look at certain movies and stuff, they'll say, ah, pour one to the brothers. For another one to do, it's like they do it all the time because you're asking for them. Um, the ancestral call is a little more than just a libation. The ancestral call is asking for your ancestors, their strength to be your strength. And so you are remembering your ancestors, but your ancestors are the people that have gone before you, the people in your community. Uh, they, you're like, Edward Blyden, Hubert Harrison, Jeannie Manuel. All of these people are our past. Their strength, they have struggled. The, the brothers in 1733, all the freedom fighters, the, everything, their strength becomes our strength, but every family has ancestors and their ancestors is what makes our strength. Mm -hmm. So your family, is your ancestor strength too, because their bloods run through you. And so you're asking for them, you, for their remembrance, for all the ladies that did uh, the, the coal mining, for the queens, they, they all are our ancestors and we are just remembering them because you have to know your history and you have to know their con contributions, yes. but everybody doesn't know everybody's contribution but everybody knows your contribution in your family. So you know what your father, your great grandfather did, your great grandmother did, you know where your people are coming from. And so that leads you forward. And so you know your history. Libation is definitely comes from the European religion practices. And it's essentially calling forth the ancestors by pouring water or spirits on the ground and you will pour this water and call names of people, but you can also try to bring forth the ancestors that are unknown. But essentially when you pour the water and you call their name, you're inviting them to be in the moment and be present with you. Yeah, so this is a time for, as Giyats, as historians, each person is a histo historian in their family, the elders. And I like to think that libation is also remembering and thanking our ancestors for their efforts, for their struggles, because they struggled for future generations. It didn't just benefit them. We stand on the shoulders of our elders. So it's nothing but respect to remember them and honor their names, you know? And you also look at the different religions every religion they're not going to necessarily call it a, re a libation and the pan-african support group and african liberation day is not a religious ceremony right but within it you take time to honor and give respect and once all of us are together we still have to give thanks to god and bring in that spiritual aspect because that's what makes us human and to recognize the efforts of others no so yes I'm yeah. that part is very important to start out it sets the tone for giving thanks and then we saw just one thing for the legislature right because we there's like i said there's some certain activity that should be characteristic of the legislature of course, like Sister Felicia said, libation should be one of them. The conch or drumming should be a call to order, right? Um, 
the anthem the anthem got to be one of them and oh, then, all three all three and then you have the um you have remarks guest speakers um but we suggest to um remark the post the people who've been organizing uh, african liberation Day in the community yes. so they don't have to be the main guest speaker but it should be one to be able to make a remark you know and pay respect to them because sometimes okay, we don't honor efforts. those those who've been contributing and who've been doing the work you know the groundwork so we suggest that you invite people uh, uh, an individual of different organizations who've been having African liberation. And this is a remark. Yes. You know, and it's possible if we could get international people, somebody from international too, from Africa or whatever, to come and um, speak at your African liberation day too. The legislature um, has in the past yeah. invited people from Africa mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. from the United States to come into the chambers and, and speak. And, speak. Mm -hmm. and that not only that's part of our ambassadorial role to reach out to ancestors in Africa and say, we remember you, we are honoring you. And it gives the Virgin Islands a, a added of credibility just to think that we were one of the first people who honored Martin Luther King Day, right? So if we are that bold to honor and remember our history, People respect you, nations respect you, when you respect and honor your history and your culture. The Virgin Islands, many times we like to say it's a melting pot, but it's not. It's a stew with different cultures, and there's nothing wrong with all the cultures learning about one another and respecting one another. And we should not water down our history to learn about others only. We have to learn about our roots, our DNA, so that the youth will know what they have to achieve. So one of the things, as we say youth, the youth are always involved in the African Liberation Day program. Whether it's reading a poem, um, we've had them come up and do welcomes. You've had, a, for instance, the queens of the earth have come into the chambers and done um, songs and dance. Olamola dancers. And when you give the youth that type of opportunity and that type of exposure, then they realize, but wait, my culture is important because I was invited to the legislature and I did our cultural dances. That means they're important. So the pride that you put into your children who are going to be our future leaders, very, very important, right? And the drummers again, and many times the drummers are young youth with the elders. So you have the passing on of knowledge there. You should always have as Brother Liba said, someone given the chronology of African Liberation Day and keep it up to today because what's happening in Africa is extremely important and we need to be kept up to date and the relationship of what has progressed because the things that they were speaking for in the first African Liberation Day is not achieved yet. It's not and, achieved. Um, and talking about our youth and of the elders, um, we have produced in the past Pan-African Support Group. We've produced a whole bunch of booklets and um, this has started from the 1980s mm -hmm. and yeah. 1990s and we have- 1990s, yeah. Yeah. And so we've produced them with African Liberation Day. One of the booklets is from 1993. Um, one is from 1996. We produced a book and we, um, a lot of times where the education comes in, you try to go in, you can't necessarily go into the high schools, but you go into the universities. And that's where a lot of Pan-African groups come out of. They come, up, they come out of the universities, the youth, and they are, they're like organizations. And UBI, um, they, they've had that too. And right now, um, we um, 
we produce like the 10 great Africanists, Pan-Africanists in the world. And if you if you get, get to see them there, like Marcus Garvey, Ahmad Siko Touré, Malcolm X, they are Franz Fanon, Amy jo Jacques Garvey, Kwame Nkrumah, W.E. Du Bois, George Padmore. I mean, they 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 are great speakers, and they and they are a Pan Africanist. And you have you have Hubert Harrison, you have Edward Milba Blyden, you have Kwame. Tore, uh, I mean, all of these people, if you follow their, their speakings and their books, because they have books that produce, and it's just to give our, our youth the books to read. But then when we produce these books, they have read them and they created articles and we created articles um, for the Pan-African Support Group. And so we have Homefront, VI Africa Speaks, and these are all pu publications, One African Nation for the Millennium, this is African liberation in 19, for the emancipation to liberation, building one Pan-African nation, organizing the masses for one unified Africa, bring forward our past. And of course, it's like, if you think this is a, this is not a total male thing because there's always the women and the women are always a part of, because they were all inclusive. So we, um, consciousness, African women will, Accelerate the Pan-African Nation and Pan-African Support Group, and it is a turn to the left for a unified Africa. And so these books, and we, we still produce books, and um, we have produced these books, and we will continue producing these books, and um, we we get them out and let people have them so that they can read. And they, they have articles that are in here that are, are, are written by many of our people, um, that uh, that uh, are in. So we put the books out there. We do the forum. We do the rally. We do the whole thing. Speaking about UVI too, UVI. as we're talking, right? There have been some awesome seminars at UVI, and the height of intellectual discussion with the speakers that were brought in with the youth, the students, you know, you would think you're in Washington, D.C., where they have historically had those high-level debates with the youth and the different schools and scholars. It's awesome. They, UVA has had a series of, you know, lectures and discussions, question and answer, and you engage in these young Virgin Islanders or young Caribbean people who come up to the university to see the height of intellectual discussion. And then you can talk about all the people in the Caribbean, throughout the Caribbean, who have contributed. And when you look at the contributions that Caribbean people have made to the United States and to Europe, right? Mm. It's amazing. We just want to emphasize, yes, we can celebrate our culture. We do have a culture as African people here. Uh, so that should include, whether it's the Pan-African support group or the legislature, it should include fashion. Yes. Because, you know, right now you're in a European fashion. <laughs> no, but the picture. Oh. Yeah, but the picture is African. But I like, we talk about African fashion, you know, yes. for sure. In the Virgin Islands, uh, we who have done any little bit of, of studying of the history of where some of the people came from west africa is a big part of the culture and so when you hear some of the terms used even outside of african liberation day we're still using certain west african terms and just how we speak in the virgin islands but people may not know that that's what's happening because it's mixed in with the english and it's all just common same thing with food same thing with um, some of the dances, some of the music, um, probably certain expressions, nonverbals. Uh, and so a lot of the terms that you hear when different cultural activities take place in the Virgin Islands, a lot of them are West African. And I don't want to say any one particular place. We know Ghana 
Nigeria, you know, the, the Gold Coast and gen area in general. So some of the words come from the Yoruba language, um, the Yoruba traditions, and those again are just part of spirituality that was practiced and has just continued to be passed on. So some of the phrases likewise that you hear the drummer saying or um, Senator Jackson using, he's, he's very connected with Ghana. And so there, there will be um, Ghanaian words at times, adinkra symbols like the Sankofa, uh, which means to go back and fetch your, people put different things in this area, but your history, your culture, your understanding and bring it forward with you into the future to make more beneficial use of what has already been, what you've learned um, now in the present and in the future. So go back and fetch it. That's the short way people tend to say that. Um, you'll hear Ashe, uh, and some people will respond back depending on, depending on who you're around and if they're actual practitioners, uh, they will say Ashe after it's been said a few times. But people who just in general use the word Ashe use it as mm, similar to how people who are in other religious organizations say amen or um, so it is is what it actually means. Um, so somebody might be just giving confirmation to whatever was just said, that type of thing. Uh, it's, it's Yoruban and it means so be it. And it's also looked at as uh, some people say your ashe or your, your power that makes things happen. You might see people blowing in uh, a cup at times and they'll say put your ashe into it. So it has a variety of different uh, interpretations, but it's basically just saying, yeah, it's, it's going to happen. Let it be. Um, we're giving we're giving our ashe. The food, of course. Yes. <laughs> yeah, food should be the type of food that we eat. It have not necessarily be food from Africa, but we, it should be food that we have created there. That's really African in the essence, you know. It's still African in the essence. We don't create it in Africa, but it's created here. And, uh, and we set the foundation for just the food, of course. And, um, um, but wearing also African. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like yes. also, also white. white. white yeah. Also and wearing white. Wearing white is, um, it, came, it really came out of Guinea and Ghana. And it's wearing white shows solidarity and unity. And yes. so that's what they uh, appreciated that in. And that's where the white comes from. It's like when you do any kind of uh, ceremony and stuff. So yes. you wear African traditional wear and your culture and for marches and those kind of things you do the white because it shows one and it's pulling those things together many different cultures have different reasons for wearing the all white for example as a part of the bi madras one of the colors is white and it represents the flower sacks that we used to wear however when it comes to african liberation day and certain other um spiritual related holidays People wear all white in the Yoruba tradition to signify purity and spiritual leadership. It can also be used for setting clear intentions and for bringing about peace. And then when you talk about the flag, you're talking about um, the flag and the colors are red, black, and green, but yellow is also there. And those are a, con a, um, they are a combination of the Garvey flag Marcus Garvey's flag and the Ethiopian flag. And the red, we know is for the blood. The black is for our color. The green is for the land. And the yellow is for the riches. And if you go through the African, all the flags in the African nations, Caribbean. there and in Caribbean, mm -hmm. you will notice that is a running theme in most of the flags that those countries and nations have because those are our colors and the flag that we generally fl um, uh, fly right is the red black and green that's the uh, one we got garvey you know um because that, that was declared in 19 in the 1920 at a conference international conference they had in harlem that that's the flag that represents African people throughout the world, regardless of your nationality. So that's why we 
to like that plan in particular you know what do you see in terms of the the different flags that either the organization well usually the organizations bring sometimes they have the flag of ghana and that's the the one with the red yellow green and the black star and the liberation flag is more the official flag for african liberation day which was from the United Negro Improvement Association, Marcus Garvey's organization. So that red, black, and green is the one that the legislature is supposed to raise uh, and have up for the entire day with our other Virgin Islands flag and the U.S. flag uh, for the purpose of signifying that it is commemorating African Liberation Day in the territory. Flying a flag is significant in that we're still saying that as African people, everybody, everybody has whether it's European, they got nation. Whether it's um, um, Asian, they got mm. nation. What about African people? We, we need a nation, and that's been articulated by Dr. Wilma Blyden in the 19th century. And all we come down to Inkuma and Malcolm X and all this stuff. We as a people need a nation too. That's why we do not use the word tribe. We are not no tribe. We are nation. Uh, you know, Africa got over 3,000 uh, ethnic groups, you know, not tribe, they get ethnic groups, diverse culture, and of course we are part of that, um, that offspring, you know, of Africa in the Caribbean. So that's why we're trying to emphasize, okay, that two things, our African culture that we celebrate, yes, because we do have a culture, we do have a history, and, uh, but we also letting people know they will be celebrating African Liberation Day until Africa is liberated and developed as a world power that will be respected throughout the world. And that's the only way we as African people throughout the world will get respect when Africa is standing on its own two feet. And I, I would like to see it even continued after that mm. because you have to be vigilant, mm. all right? Today, even in Africa, Africans are learning and acknowledging and not afraid to speak up of historically their miseducation. And they are still trying to get from under colonial rule. And the former colonizers still have our artifacts in their museums and in their countries. And they still control the wealth of Africa how can Africa be the richest continent? But their people, the majority of their people do not have that wealth because the wealth is exported. No? Mm. So if you don't know what's happening and if the people involved are not taught, you'll always have a problem. Nothing, you know, the Virgin Islands during apartheid. The Virgin Islands was looked at as an example of what could happen in South Africa, right? With the different groups getting along. So we're not going to say it is bad for our children to be celebrating now, St. Patrick's Day. But the St. Patrick's Day parade has gotten so huge. And then when we try to have African Liberation Parade or celebrations, people want to know why you have to remember that. What is St. Patrick's Day to us? What is the historical significance? We have so far removed from our history that even in St. John, growing up, July 3rd in St. John was called Cultural Day. As a child, I didn't understand what July 3rd meant because especially in St. John, the focus was on July 4th. So we are losing our history. We are losing and disrespecting our ancestors 
for their blood that was shed when we don't pass on this history. At the end of the day, if we don't think of continuity and sustainability, we will be losing our culture. And that's, that's the main significance of passing on anything, just so that whatever we're about, our history, our pride, our culture, our, our knowledge uh, of who we are, who we have been, what we've done, how far we've come, uh, allows the next generation to continue doing the work and making progress towards development. So that's, that's in general with anything, but for African Liberation Day, there are a lot of people in the Virgin Islands that, don't, that still don't know African Liberation Day exists. They don't know what's in the law. They don't understand the significance of it. Many of them don't consider themselves connected to Africa. And there's actually shame about it, about being connected to Africa. So if they hear about it, they tend to back away and want to shy away from even get engaging in the conversation. So for those of us that are not ashamed of Africa and the history, the beauty, the, the triumphs, the, the, all of the, the positive things, uh, as well as the things that aren't so positive, just like any other culture, we want to make sure that the youth are aware of all of it so that they can continue moving forward and not necessarily having to make the same mistakes, but learning from those of the past, learning from the triumph of the past, learning from all the greatness of the past so that they remember that they too can go much further than maybe sometimes they even believe. I think it's very important to pass down cultures and traditions because if you don't pass it down, it would be lost. If you don't, if we only keep it amongst the older people within the community, then when they die, we no longer know about it. And again, it's not just for African Liberation Day, it's for other local and historical events that happen just for the Virgin Islands, but then also globally. African Liberation Day is the day that you take up the Heritage Week, you teach everything and you do the forms and the rallies, but it is important. And we have to take the steps to make sure that we educate our youth because they are our future. And we have to make sure that they understand what our ancestors fought for, what we struggled for, what we continue to struggle for, and for the liberation throughout the diaspora. And we don't want to separate ourselves from the, we want to realize that we are one African nation. So we are in the Virgin Islands. We don't even want to divide, we don't divide St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John, and Water Island. <laughs> um, we want to make sure that all our islands and all our children understand that this is their history, but we want them to also understand the history throughout the diaspora, throughout North America, South America, the Caribbean, through Africa, through the different other continents, wherever anybody of African descent is, because you have to know your history, you have to know your importance, you don't let anybody take that history away and don't let anybody take a book away from you. You have to have that knowledge. Knowledge is power. Yes. And documentation. So thank you for documenting. This is our modern way of documenting. The books, you know, we've had, we know what has happened through the ages where there are times when people are burning books. So we have to keep writing, you know? We don't even respect November 23rd as our Freedom Fighters Day. As a government, we don't teach the people about that. We don't teach the people about our struggle in 1733, all right? Which was before the other struggles. And when we don't do that, we, again, disrespect the blood of our ancestors and we don't realize our greatness. 
so we can't complain about the youth and wonder why they're so violent when we are not acknowledging where we came from. So African Liberation Day, the rallies, the speaking, it encompasses all of this. And the schools really, really should be promoting this and teaching the youth. This is why you need your education. And I'll ask Lima to um, enlighten people about um, some of the activities uh, that generally happen uh, yes. about uh, the radio programs. Okay, um, very good. This year, we usually, usually have a forum or um, uh, culture rally, but this year, we'll, for a certain factor, we'll have a radio program on WSDA coming this Saturday, in fact, this Saturday, the 25th of May. Uh, we're going uh, to start up around 2 o'clock in WSDA. We encourage one and all the, those in the legislature and those in the community to zoom in, tune in. Lock in on WSD at 13.40, 2 o'clock, between 2 and 4 this coming Saturday. And we give, give your ground name what African Liberation Day is about. And of course, we have our cultural artists presenting and uh, presenting to celebrating our African heritage. And the message that they express is in tune with uh, African Liberation Day. And generally, we forget to mention that we generally have a theme. But we'll get back with that, and that, time, that theme. Every year we need to have a theme. So, no, so, so rally are wrong. Uh, it's good to have an idea what you rally are wrong, not to have no idea at all, because you won't wear your rally are wrong at all. So uh, we generally need to have and a theme. Have the and, and yeah, you mentioned the best theme that we have. So we got one or to come. We have activity, show other groups in the community, in St. Croix and so forth. We have things. Um, but no, for sure, the Pan African support group really have that on the radio. And hopefully next year we'll have it physically again at Culture Rally. Well, we do yeah, give thanks for all those groups that yeah. do support. Yeah. And there are a lot of community groups that do support our different activities and, and in, historical things. Right, and individual and too. Individual, in, yeah. Yes, groups and individuals. And we mm -hmm. will get back with you in terms of other groups that are having activities for it. Okay, yeah. Huh? Um, there's also every Saturday, every, every Saturday, Saturday from 2 to 4, there's online university. And online university actually uh, is done with the Pan-African Support Group. And it is usually hosted by Mr. Olani and Mr. Adeyemi. Sealy. Sealy Adeyemi yeah. and Liba Olani. And they will, they take different topics. They talk about different things in the community and they re-educate. And so this is a way of educating our community on a yes. regular basis. And it is in honor of Brother Jean, Professor Jean Emmanuel, who's really started the program. So, and, and honor Lumluma Amin, who was a member, member of the Pan-African Support Group. And, and then we close with this guy. We talk a lot, right? Um, the thing we need to do before, because African Liberation is really a culmination of activity, right? The Pan-African Support Group and others, I know we've been celebrating um, Black History Month, what they call Black History Month. Uh, we have a program like that. Um, 1733, we've been working with a com committee. Uh, Kwanzaa, you know, we have Kwanzaa, uh, African Liberation Day, and some other type of activity for tribute to whether it's Martin Luther King to Emancipation Day, yeah, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, tribute to some of our great leaders, you know, Ma Martin Luther King, since we have a holiday, um, Malcolm X, um, Blyden, Hubert H. Harrison, even Bob, Mar even Bob Marley, yeah, mm -hmm. even Bob Marley, we pay tribute to. And as a group, and yeah, yeah right, said, as last year, and as a group, we usually were involved in anything um, that is relevant to us. Here in the Virgin Island, from yes. when they had a status, political status um, yes. meeting, then we were involved, stating our position and status and so forth. So we don't want people to think we just talk about Africa, but Africa is there. <laughs> Africa is there whether they want to do it or not. So that's what we're primarily talking about. 
God, Marcus Gabby said it best. The whole world is our village until Africa is liberated. So wherever we are, that's where we struggle. And that's how we contribute to uh, the liberation of Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, many great speakers uh, said it. Uh, Malcolm X, uh, Amaka Cabral out of Guinea, Bissou. He said whatever, he said it, whatever we do in Guinea, Bissou, is, is a contribution to the liberation of African in the United States, uh, the Caribbean and elsewhere. And he said, whatever we do over here in the Western Hemisphere is a contribution to the liberation of Africa. Mm -hmm. So we just let the people know, yes, we are interconnected, we ain't separated. You must know, like Bob Marley and others say, we must know our past if we want to know our future. That's why we emphasize know our history. And Joanza Kondjufu says that we need to study our past and the mistakes of the past so we don't miss make them again. So Asante Sana, which is Kiswahili. See, we try to speak a little African language. Kiswahili, thank you very much. Thank you. Ashe? Ashe. 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 <laughs> Ashe says, pick it up. So be it. So be it. So be it. Take it to God.